How do you prepare for Christmas? Do you trim the tree? Do you buy presents? Do you send cards? Do you make Christmas cookies from recipes handed down through your family? All of those are things that people do to prepare for Christmas, and they're great things to do. But what about spiritually? How do you spiritually prepare for Christmas? Today I want to talk about our spiritual preparation for Christmas. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. So here's the person that we most associate with preparing for Christmas, and that's John the Baptist. We know about John. John was the one who had that phrase, prepare the way of the Lord. And, and we have an image of John that, that's a little bit wild, a little bit out there. But who really was John? We do know some things about John from the gospel narratives. John was Jesus's cousin. John was born maybe three or four months before Jesus, so they were the same age. They probably grew up together, saw each other, knew each other. And John is pictured as a really unique person in the Gospels. He's pictured as someone who's sort of a mirror image of the prophet Elijah from the Hebrew Scriptures. You know, like Elijah, he lives in the desert, he wears animal skins for clothing, and, and he's, you know, pretty direct with people and tells people what to do. And, you know, we sort of feel awkward with that when we see that in the text. But we don't often really step back and think about what is it that John was telling people to do to prepare the way for the Lord, to get ready for Jesus' ministry, for the coming of Jesus into the world. John told people some very simple things. He said, you know, if you have two coats, give one to somebody who doesn't have any coats. And if you're a soldier, don't push people to do things that you're supposed to do yourself. Do your own job. And if you're a tax collector, don't collect extra money. Don't cheat people. John was saying to people, lead a good moral ethical life. Care for other people in tangible ways. And, and don't cheat, don't lie, don't do things you shouldn't. John was conveying the same kinds of things that all the religious traditions across the world convey to people about leading a moral and ethical life. He just was really upfront about it. How did he get to that point? See, that's what I think is really important. What was John's way of preparing? See, somehow I think John experienced something from knowing Jesus, from growing up around Jesus, and that led him to the desert, to solitude, to live in a cave, to seek out a contemplative life. And it was in seeking out a contemplative life, taking time for contemplative practices like prayer and meditation, that he came to understand himself came to understand who his cousin Jesus was, he came to an understanding of God as well as people. And it was in that that he began to move about other people, recognizing that while he had something to do, it wasn't the most important thing. He was helping people get ready for something more. So there was a humility about John. He saw himself for who he was. I think that's really important for us in thinking about our preparation for Christmas. To really prepare for this celebration of God's coming to birth again in the world, we need to open space in our lives through contemplation, through meditation, through spiritual practice, and in doing that, we come to understand ourselves more, we come to understand other people more, and we come to understand God more. So that we have an openness about us the way John did. And it's out of that openness that we are able to encounter God being born again in new ways, God being born anew for ourselves and for others. 
that process leads us into living in ways that are more compassionate and caring for others with greater integrity. You know, really focusing on what's important. And that's, that's, those were John's directives. That's what he was telling people to do. But he did that based on this deep interior life, this contemplative life. So as we prepare for Christmas, yes, trim that tree, sing the songs, and above all, bake those cookies. But also take time for that contemplation and meditation to open your heart so that as we open our hearts, we experience something new of God coming into our lives. And of course, this isn't just something for Christmas. This is something for our lifetimes, day in and day out, to continue to open ourselves more and more to experience the fullness of God and the fullness of our, ourselves. Thanks for your time today. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, make some comments, and of course, have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you.